our final speaker for the afternoon is Sam Robinson. Sam Robinson is the Vice Chair of the Chinook Nation and has been a tireless advocate and speaker on Chinook culture, um, particularly as, um, as somebody who's um, been advocating for the restoration of the tribe. And he's come today to talk about tradition and the persistence of tradition and um, some of the things that we've been touching on today and how they are a part of um, Chinook um, culture in the contemporary, in contemporary times. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to him. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you also for coming. Well, hi, I'm Nagy Jakes. Nagy Dean, Sam Robinson. Uh, as I said, hello, my friends. My name is Sam Robinson. Uh, uh, like it come ducks to new Swalwa. I know a little Swalwa. I'm still learning. You know, I'm in that learning curve. You know, I think it's mainly because I don't use it enough. But I'm trying to teach my granddaughter how to speak so that uh, she can talk to Chuki or Grandpa. You know, uh, a little bit more. And she's she's getting pretty good at it. You know, we you know that's something something that you need to to you know use and so forth. The flag flying out front here. You know, in Chinook Nation. You know, I think uh, the Maritime Museum. Uh, months back uh, we had a ceremony to raise that flag um, I think they realized that the Chinook people were the first mariners of the Columbia River uh, after all it was Tom uh, Conway who was the first bar pilot who would hop in that big 50 foot canoe and go across the bar and, and help those ships come back up the river you know so um, very very important history down here you know especially here as so I look out on the river we all the way from here all the way up to I work in Washougal you know like yeah, I just envisioned our ancestors on the water. Uh, the Chinook Nation uh, is five tribes, you know, uh, and that's the uh, uh, the Klaza, the, the Kathlamet, the Willapa, the Wakaika, and the Lower Chinook. Those are the five tribes that signed the Anzengar Treaty. Uh, and then that's, that's us. You know, Chinook people did go all the way up to the Dalles, but several of those the tribes and groups signed other treaties and were either marched off to uh, Warm Springs or Yakima or Grand Mon or so forth. Uh, our treaty, uh, our treaty was to march us over to the Willapaw, and that Willapaw was supposed to be our reservation. Um, unfortunately, uh, uh, when they took the treaty back to uh, uh, D.C., they told they told the senators back there that these people were so infected with smallpox and malaria that they would be gone, and therefore you wouldn't have to ratify their treaty. Uh, later, they invited us to the Olympic uh, Treaty and the Shehalis River Treaty, trying to march us off to either Yakima or, or Quinault. And, uh, you know, after several days of bickering, uh, they walk out on us, and, and no treaty was made there. Um, I'm, and Jefferson fully understood the fact that you either had to buy land from uh, uh, people, you know, this is a world law, and you had to buy it or go to war and take it from them. And, and they couldn't buy it from us because they couldn't get a treaty with us and so the next step was probably to uh, try to kill us uh, i think we felt pretty fortunate that the civil war broke out and all the blue girls were away from Fort Columbia. so <laughs> yeah. anyway uh oops i didn't see that picture from earlier uh, my, my picture's a little messed up here so i'm just going to kind of just go from that bit. um you know with, with the Chinook people today you know we, we, we share a lot of ceremonies and a lot of our culture with our, our friends on the outside but we also encourage all of our youth, you know, to come forward, you know, and, and learn our, our songs and dancing and so forth. This happens to be at our first salmon ceremony, uh, a very important ceremony. It's a traditional ceremony that's been going on for thousands of years. And in the first salmon ceremony, we, uh, we uh, bring in that first fish, and there's proper protocol on how to kill the fish and eat the fish and, and, and respect that fish and, and who can eat the fish and so forth. And then you return those bones back out to the... Uh, back out to the uh, ocean and it, the, those bones would go out and tell all the other fish that uh, how well respected he was and, and uh, to go ahead and come on up the river that the Chinook people will respect you. And well, I remember one time that we were going out there, uh, it was kind of interesting too, we, we always pay attention to the tides when we're in the canoes because we don't want to get sucked out into the ocean. And we took the bones out there and we know there was an incoming tide and, we just took them out a little ways, maybe a mile or so, and we set those bones down. And Tony Johnson said a few words, and next thing you know, those bones just went right out to the ocean, even though it was an incoming tide. You know, so I thought that was pretty, pretty good. Um, these, these people here are, 
are friends of ours. We share with a lot of uh, tribes outside the Chinook Nation. These are the Wamish. They come down from up in the Seattle area, share their songs at our first hand ceremony. And uh, they're sporting some very, very nice uh, cedar bark there, you know, and some hats and, and some desks and so forth. And then, and as, 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 as with us, you know, it's keeping the culture alive is always very important. <laughs> oh. I didn't see that one last time either. That, that, that's my granddaughter. She's out there on the Wolf Hall Bay overlooking Bay Center. You know, I've got her out on the drum, and, and she's got a nice little cedar hat on there. And she, she's just, uh, she's ch 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 Chubby's, uh, Phoenix Kula Kula. She's Chubby's little bird, you know. She's always referred to me as Chubby ever since she's been born. Chubby's grandma, Chicha's grandma, you know. So she, she's, she's going to be the one that's going to help me speak Wawa -wah because I'm talking to her, you know. Was, in the beginning, it was all ski later. You know, and then it became Alski Wah or Alski Wah Wah later talk. And now we're up to Alski Nasaika Wah Wah. And I guess she is. Later we talk, my friend. You know, so so she, she just, you know, she, we're, we're working on it together, you know. I think she's, I, you know, I see her at some of our tribal events and the way she really is comfortable getting around. And the way she gets around, you know, I tell her, I said, yes, Destiny, I said, you're evidence that there was women tie or women chiefs in the Chinook Nation. <laughs> <laughs> Opening our traditional highways are very, very important to us, you know. This, this happened to be uh, last year, we went over to uh, Topland, and uh, we came across from Topland to Bay Center, and uh, we opened up that, it's about maybe an eight mile, maybe six to eight mile highway. We tried to do it the year before, but there was like 14 foot swells out of there. Some of the people were afraid, afraid but, you know, <laughs> so, but we didn't do it anyway. But, uh, um, it is, it's very important to open up those relationships, you know, here, here that day we're traveling with uh, the Chinook people from Grand Ron, Chinook people from our nation, and then Chinook people from Showwater. And, uh, and we're going to do it again next weekend. We're heading, actually, that year we went from uh, uh, Copeland to Bay Center, and next year we're going from, or this year we're going from Bay Center to Copeland. But we'll continue going back and forth on the waters. It's very important to have those traditional highways and relationships and be able to share share the culture amongst ourselves. And it's always fun to be on the water, believe me. Um, and, uh, when I first came on the council, we had a real tough time on how whether we were going to participate with Lewis and Clark. You know, um, we thought, how did Lewis and Clark bring the people? Well, they brought another avenue into our area and more, probably more disease, so we didn't know what to do, you know. I was a young council member, just got out of council, and, and I said, well, it's going to give us a great platform to tell our story. So we did participate with Lewis and Clark, and, and we were able to get our story out but time and time again. You know, you talk about the Chinook people, and you tell somebody that we're not a fairly recognized tribe, and their jaws would drop. Well, this group of people here, these reenactors, they, they flew our flag all the way from the mouth of the Columbia River back to St. Louis that day, just so they could tell the Chinook story of the whole way. And if you ever notice the Lady Washington, when the Lady Washington comes into port, the Lady Washington flies the Chinook flag as well. In fact, I was down in Monterey, and the Lynx was coming in, the tall ship Lynx was coming into Monterey. And I looked down, I look up, and there, sure enough, there's a Chinook flag flying. And they said they fly our flag in any port that they go into, Hawaii, California, wherever, so they could tell the Chinook, Chinook people not being better right next time. But I was walking down, I was walking down the sidewalk here in St. Louis, I was going to go look at a, a Thule, uh, Lodge that the Warm Springs had set up there, and, and the next thing you know, I heard some. I heard a little ruckus. I look out and I see our flag, and it was just made me feel so good. 